What's going on Wolfpack? Time again for another WolfofBricks.com update. I am Jim and of course this is where we talk about Lego investing and reselling. So today we're going to be talking about five people that should not be selling Lego or probably reselling altogether. Now I'm going to go over these five things and during the time you may say to yourself, well Jim isn't this obvious? You would like to think that this is obvious and for many people that it is obvious but for a lot of people it's not so obvious so I just want to go ahead and you know with a lot of good we talk about with Lego I also want to address some of the not so good. Now it doesn't mean by any means <laughs> am I saying that these people should be excluded from buying and reselling Lego at all but there's certain things that you need to be prepared for in order for you to do this because you want to be successful right you don't want to be failing at this and you don't want to be you know having just a terrible experience and 10 years from now you're looking back and saying geez wasn't that just a crappy time i just don't understand why some people would go ahead and invest and buy and sell into lego so the first type of person that should not invest in lego is someone who is broke again this is something that should be obvious but i I guarantee you it's not. There are a lot of times I will talk to people and I don't, I ask them a few questions, but I try not ask them a lot of personal questions, right? And they'll say, yes, I'm thinking about doing this. I'm thinking about doing that. There's some deals coming up. You, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a diverse brick folio, if you want to call it. And I'll say, okay, that's great. You know, here's a few things that I might do, which you may want to consider if it's a right fit for you. If not, no worry, no big deal. And then nine months to 12 months later, I get an email or a text from somebody that says, hey, you know, I'm really in a bad way now. I, you know, I don't know why I did this at that time. And there was one time where this happened to a, a close friend of mine. And he's like, hey, do you mind if, you, you know, you take over my Lego? And I said, sure. And I, whatever the RRP price was, minus 20% off for the discounts. I said, we'll just, we'll just call it even at that. And he was happy. I was happy. And everything was fine. So when you start a Lego investing business, you want to, of course, be smart about it. And planning your finances is just key. Personal experience for me when I'm in my mid 40s now, in my mid 20s, you know, I met this woman who later became my wife. While we were dating, I said to myself, wow, I got a crappy credit score. I have zero money in the bank and I have eight grand in debt, right? I said to myself, you got to turn it around. So 18 months later, I had 40 grand in the bank. I was debt free and I had, you know, a pretty good credit score. So if you have cash and you're wanting to go ahead and buy Lego, great. If you don't have cash, you have to do that one step first, which is clear all of your personal business up, which shouldn't take too much time if you're motivated enough, because we are multiplying money faster than, you know, most industries, most anything, right? That should be motivation enough, but you need to clear that personal business up in order for you to get to the starting line and actually become a Lego investor and reseller. The next person that should not be buying or reselling Lego are people that just don't have any time on their hands. Now, let me tell you, man, when COVID hit, I met a lot of people that had a lot of time on their hands. That was one of the reasons why my previous YouTube channel was able to gain subscribers so quickly, right? Because everybody was sitting around doing nothing. But those people have found out that once life started moving again and they got into their, not just their relatively busy, but really busy life again, there's just no time for it. And I know quite a few people right now that have Lego retired sets that have been retired for a while and they don't have any plans to sell them. And here's the deal. I'm not I'm not that person that should needs to crack the whip out. That's their business. That's not my business. And if they're happy with that, of course I'm happy for them. But let me tell you, there's this guy I know in the Midwest, really hope he's not watching this, who lives on a farm, right? And I'm saying to myself, this guy has a bunch of Lego sets in a barn right now. And I'm certainly hoping that there aren't field mice that are eating away. If, if he's able to take those sets and sell them, he's less likely to have a bunch of field mice come into his barn and chew up all those boxes. So if you don't have the time to do this right now, that is okay. Do what you need to do, get your personal things into account, or you may just not be able to have the availability to go ahead 
and run a Lego reselling and investing business. The third type of person that should not be selling Lego is the person that's just wanting to do it for fun. Now, let me use the right context, right? I have a relative, he likes to buy hardback books from Barnes and Noble, he'll read them, he'll take care of the books and make sure there's no damage. When he's done reading the book for fun, he'll go on eBay and sell it and he'll get some of his money back and that's fine. There's a difference between doing it for fun, being a Lego reseller hobbyist, and then doing it somewhat professionally, right? If you are doing this for fun, that may mean that you're going out and buying Lego purchases that you're really not doing a lot of research on. There is potential to waste money. I remember this post when I was reading Brick Picker back in 2012 about this person who just went and purchased a bunch of discounted Legos, didn't know what they were, didn't do any research. He, you know, opened up all the bags, he threw them on the kitchen table, and he presented it to his wife like he actually accomplished something. Well, fast forward to 18 months later, things didn't go the way that he thought they would, right? So he thought he was kind of doing it for fun, and he wasn't. At the time, it may have been fun, but it was a costly fun, right? So if you're going to go ahead and buy Lego for the purpose of reselling, you should say to yourself, am I doing this as a hobbyist, which is a little bit more disciplined, you, you know, you're not doing this full time, but you're getting on the forums, you're getting good information, you're making more of an informed decision than somebody that's just doing it for fun, or is this something that you're wanting to do professionally where it's going to take a little bit more time and you're going to have to do a deeper dive into what you need to do to get results? The fourth type of person that should not be reselling Lego is the person that just doesn't have any storage options. You know, storage is a very popular topic to talk about when it comes to Lego investing in reselling. And I've talked to all kinds of people. I've talked to a person who has a huge warehouse and actually lives in his warehouse. It's pretty smart move. And I've also talked to people that are in urban environments and they'll say to me, hey Jim, what do you recommend I do for storage? And I'm like, uh, well, you live in a one bedroom apartment. I'm not exactly sure what I could do for you. How's your closet space looking? You need to plan accordingly. And what that also means is you have to plan for storing those Legos. It's always curious to me whenever I post a video, you know, of my Lego sets in a storage unit or a warehouse, there'll be someone in the comments that'll be like, wait, you also have to pay to store those Legos too? As if, you know, you're not paying for storage whenever you send it to Amazon. You are paying storage whenever you send things to Amazon. That is always going to be an overhead fee unless you're able to just keep it into one room in your house. But you do wanna plan accordingly in order to make sure you're not swimming in Lego. And the fifth and final reason why someone should not be a Lego reseller is those people that have unreasonable expectations. These are the people that, you know, they're gonna buy a Lego set, and I'm sorry if this is you, and you're like, I'm just gonna hold this for nine or 10 years, this will be great. Or they're going to say to themselves, you, you know, I know what I have, right? It, it's kind of like whenever someone's trying to trade in their car uh, because they're, they're going to be buying a new car and they say, I know what I have. I'm not gonna let this go below $400. And they become kind of emotional with the property that they have. As I've said many times, you have to be willing to adjust and pivot in order to clear out a successful and clear path for your business. If you're one of those people that say, you know, I plan on doubling my money every year and I'm gonna turn 10,000 into 20,000 then 40,000, I'm not saying that's unrealistic. Well, I, I kinda am. But <laughs> what I'm saying is, I think that there's a, somewhere of a more comfortable, more realistic in-between that you could get to and still be happy with the results that you're having when you look back at the previous year of your sales. Well, that's it, my friends. Hope you enjoyed the video. Five people who should not be reselling Lego. Hopefully you're not one of those, but if you are, Take what I said and heed that as guidance and try and figure out what you can do to work around that so you can be one of those people that are reselling Lego. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Once again, I'm Jim with wolfabricks.com.
always go out there and get it.